the record button uh, just so we have access to this what? down the road. Um, it'll be posted on the coach's resource page. With how many people we have tonight uh, on this call, I am going to mute everybody um, to start it off here just so we can get through these slides. And then at the end, we'll open it up for any questions. Um, but if you do want to say something, um, please put it in chat um, in case you forget. It's an easy way for us to know what you're thinking about so we can follow up at the end. Um, and then you don't have to worry about remembering it or writing it down. So any questions, throw them in chat. Um, I'll answer them along the way or Mike Sarnowski will do so. And uh, we'll make sure we get back with you about that. All righty. So we'll go ahead and get started here. So this weekend, it's going to be our first big competition in Special Olympics Maryland in the past eight, uh, 15 months. So the last date for that would have been March 7th in 2020. So it has been that long. Uh, I know that we're all really excited. Um, you as athletes have gone through a very tough time um, through COVID and everything um, and have now are coming out the other side. So I just want to say I'm really proud of you. Make sure you thank your parents, uh, whether they're on tonight or not on, um, and anybody who supported you along the way. Um, Summer Games is here. So let's get excited for that. Um, so we're sharing general information tonight on these events, but please check in with your coaches. Um, if you have anything specific, they may have some ideas that pertain solely to your county, um, and they may be able to field your question a little better. If they're not sure what it is, they will come to um, myself um, or somebody else on my team, and we'll follow up and get back with them. So kicking it off here. So here you see um, the current phase that we'll be in for summer games, which is phase 2A. Um, that may be different than what you've heard in the past, but it's next to no difference. The only difference, as you'll see at the top, um, that second highlight is squared down, will be the group size is less than 500 people. Um, so that is the only change, nothing different outside of that. Still no direct contact. So unfortunately, no high fives this year. Um, or elbow bumps, please make sure you stay six feet apart. That does not mean we can't still talk to people, socially distance and encourage them. Please do that. Um, but just keep in mind social distancing, please. And masks are required for everyone. That includes staff, GMT, spectators, um, anybody, even athletes. Um, athletes, though, while you are participating, you may take your mask off. Um, also, during any physical activity. So if you're warming up and you're on the field, um, but it's not your turn to play um, before the competition starts, you may remove your mask at that time. So outside of that, once your game is complete um, and you're walking over to awards, please put it back on for that time. Um, so yeah, same thing, pretty much you've been complying with the practices and competitions that I've seen. So thank you all, we'll stick to it here. Moving on for the schedule. So for bocce this year, we're gonna have um, two different sessions. The first session will be um, what we're calling the morning session here, and that will be unified doubles. So if you are on a unified doubles team, this will be your schedule. So the times pertaining to you here at 9 a.m., um, we'll have our coaches meeting. That's more of a note on my end. The um, time you need to be aware of is at 9.30 a.m., Oh, I skipped one. <laughs> at 8.45 a.m., health screening will open for you. So at that time, we'll show you a picture um, on the next slide, I believe it is, after we cover the second session. At 8.45 a.m., that is when screening will open. So I'd encourage you to get there as close to that time as you can, just so you can get your screening done um, and be ready for the day uh, mentally, so you can get that over with. So that'll lend to your delegation area. Um, and then warm up before, if you would like to, um, et cetera there. So the last time to be screened is gonna be 9.30 a.m. And as you can see there, that is the latest. That's when uh, the opening ceremony will also be taking place. So if you are not there by 9.30, you will be scratched. Um, at that time, we need to have everybody on the field and get ready to have the day started. So any coaches or athletes that will be on verdict field, that day uh, need to complete that screening process. Um, any spectators we'll talk about 
shortly here do not need to go through that screening process and will actually be heading a different direction um, from where that screening check-in is for athletes and coaches. So at 9.45, the competition will begin and we expect that to go two hours with how um, the divisions and brackets have worked out. So you'll be out around 11.45 um, from your competition and the awards will be at noon. Um, so also with those awards, um, the results will be posted on the outside fence, kind of near, I'll, sh I'll show you during the picture, it'll be a little easier instead of trying to explain it here. Um, going into the second session, our afternoon session, that is gonna be traditional doubles. So if you're on a traditional doubles team, that will be you. Um, your health screening will start at 1.30. And again, you will have 45 minutes, um, give or take there to complete that screening. Once you get up for the screening, it'll take less than a minute or so. Um, but just arrive close to that time, again, 1.30, uh, you'll have until 2.15 as the opening ceremonies will start at that time also. Um, competition will kick off at 2.30. And again, that's still going to be a two-hour time slot. Um, awards are estimated to go off at 4.45, and the venue should be closed around 5. So here is the venue map, a um, few different pieces to talk through here. So for parking, um, you will be able to use that parking garage right next to the field, could not be uh, much more convenient. So there's about four stories to that garage, I believe. Um, so feel free to park anywhere there. On, let's see here, there is a few different staircases, one kind of in the middle. Um, one on that far right side. Either way, it will take you down a staircase. There's also an elevator access, which will be on the right side also. Uh, if you can see my cursor there, I'm not sure if you can see the cursor. Um, that's where the elevator will be. So feel free to take that down if you need to. If not, there are staircases located around that you'll easily be able to see uh, once you arrive. So you as an athlete, the first thing to notice here is gonna be that purple box SC. Um, screening didn't fit into there <laughs> too well without being able to not see it. So SC means screening. So you will go through your screening at the times that we just talked about, and then you will proceed to your delegation area um, from there. So that's where your coach will probably set up a tent um, and everybody will be socially distanced in that patch of grass there. So, um let's talk about what do we want to talk about next we'll talk about spectators so we just talked about all the athletes taking a left there and going towards that screening location if you are a spectator you will take a right and there will be a um an entrance at that bottom right corner of um verdict field there you'll see a gate and there'll be plenty of directional arrows directing you that way um and so from that point, you can proceed into the spectator seating area. It will be separated from where those courts are. Uh, there'll be signs of please do not pass blank area. Um, so that'll be what those um, orange boxes are for. You'll have um, bleachers kind of spread out every two courts. I think there'll be one bleacher. Um, so just stay six feet away from people in those. Um, you will have a great view uh, of the day. So I think it's a great spot but please make sure that you're standing, or you'll see, sitting behind what's gonna be a white line. But again, there'll be signs up, but please do not pass that, just so we keep um, that 50 feet that we've talked about away um, from those who have been screened and those who have not been screened. So we will have 10 courts. Um, some of you may not know, but this will be the first year that we're using blow up bocce courts. Um, the Baltimore City has used them for a few events so far and they've been received very, very well. Um, I think it's from Packer World, um, but if you look up Blow Up Bocce Courts, you'll kind of get a picture of what they will be. Um, they've been perceived very well so far. The athletes have truly enjoyed playing on them, uh, but this will be the first year that we have them at summer games. So we will have 10 of those. Um, so there will be five courts on the left side of that control center pretty much, and then uh, another five on that right side all spread out from each other. That CC, like I said, will be the control center located in the middle and that will also double as um, the medical tent. So medical, if you have any um, issues that need to be um, 
dealt with during the day, a medical personnel will be in there uh, with their medical bag and they'll get you all fixed up to the best of their ability there. So on the bottom right here, before we go into the next slide, you will see the awards pavilion in that light blue box, bottom right corner there. So that is where awards will take place. I'm not gonna go into too much detail now as we have um, a couple slides on it later on, but at that point, spectators will be able to exit the same way that they came in. So spectators will be using that far right gate for the duration of the day. And then there will be an area for you um, to take pictures at the awards area separated from the athletes. Um, again, another great view of the day. We're happy to be able to have everybody spaced out yet um, being able to enjoy that um, special moment together. So for the health screening, that will take place near the delegation area like we just talked about for athletes and coaches, anybody to participate will need to pass that screening. Um, it'll be a simple couple questions um, like you've um, had at your practices or your competitions this year. That just talks about the same times that we talked about earlier. Um, and again, once you go through that screening, there needs to be no interaction with the family or other spectators until awards have completed. And after that, you can go back up to your car um, and that's of course perfectly fine. But during the day, um, please, if you're traveling back and forth from your courts and with the day, this way it's set up, it'll be a pretty fast moving day. Um, you'll play your at minimum two games. Um, but if for some reason you do have a 25 minute break, you can go back over to your delegation area. Just please um, resist the urge to go over to the spectator area um, as those have not been screened. So masks must be worn at all times, even when I'm not participating, like we talked about. But again, once you're on the court or warming up, feel free to take that mask off. So opening ceremonies, a little more detailed than what we see here. This will be the setup at each venue. So we'll have a little welcome and intro, um, have the national anthem. Um, very importantly, the athlete oath. Um, there will be a torch with law enforcement present there. And then we'll just go over some general announcements that we have for the day. Um, so with opening ceremonies, probably 90% of you um, will be out on the courts, kind of um, either standing up by your seat um, when opening ceremonies begins, because as soon as that's over, we're gonna get the day started. So there may, depending on how all the brackets work out and finalizing them in the next 24 hours, Maybe there might be a team in the delegation area um, because they're waiting to go. Most likely not. So expect that you will be out uh, by your courts. And once opening ceremonies is over, uh, the day is a full send. So the competition format, um, you will be placed in divisions and brackets based upon um, what your coaches have submitted your assessment scores are and then paired up against other similar ability athletes. Um, and that's who you'll be playing for the day. So we have uh, a few two um, division teams, um, a couple three team divisions, and I believe two four team uh, divisions. So each team will play a minimum of two games um, and they will be 25 minutes apiece. So what we'll do is we'll use kind of a, uh, the timer that's down by the field and that will be the timer that everyone goes off of. If for some reason that scoreboard or whatever goes out, uh, we will have a Towson person there to fix it. I've heard that's happened in the past, no big deal. Also volunteers will have a stopwatch with them. So we'll know exactly how long that time is. Um, note at the bottom here. So after that first session is complete and you get your awards, please exit um, the venue because it's about an hour break or so before that next group comes in. So we wanna have everybody separated um, just so there's nobody passing who has been screened, has not been screened. And plus our team just needs to get ready for that second group coming in. So here's a delegation tent area, as many of you have probably been in there before. Again, that's where um, your coaches will probably set up tents. Um, it should be a nice day, uh, whether mid 80s the last time I checked, um, though that was a day or two ago. So you will notice this is inside Burdick Field, which means that no food can be inside Burdick Field. Um, we have an amazing partnership with Towson and we're blessed to be able to work with them and have this beautiful facility. 
uh, for summer games, and we definitely don't want to ruin that. So please, please, please do not bring food inside there. If for a medical reason you need to have something, um, please eat it outside of the gate. Do not even bring it in. Um, if you need to, though, it needs to be done outside of the gate. Um, that also goes for anything but water. We just want to respect their ask here um, and keep their beautiful venue the way it is. So I think there was one other note I had here that I wanted to talk about. Ryan, while you're looking at that, I just wanted to let folks know there's been all sorts of stuff on the weather. Uh, as of right now, uh, we do have uh, projections from a weather service we use um, that goes uh, to the hourly um, breakdown for Saturday. And at Towson on Saturday, uh, they're actually looking at a really nice day. Uh, highs might get to the low to mid 70s um, and no rain until maybe a slight chance around six at night. So um, uh, the, uh, the gods are looking down on us and smiling, the bocce gods, and because uh, it was looking uh, not quite that nice uh, just a couple days ago. So um, big, big um, excitement on that end. Thank you, Mike. Um, and I was just going to say, for those of you that get hungry like me pretty consistently, um, just remember that you will be there for roughly three hours or so, um, maybe four uh, max. So please just eat um, before if you're in that first group. If you're in that second group, um, please eat before also, um, just so you're not too hungry. You can go out and compete. And then, of course, um, I hope you can enjoy a great meal after. So for uniforms, just some quick reminders here. Um, no spikes or cleats because we are on the turf. Um, hats are allowed as long as they don't have a sponsorship or corporate logo. Um, please make sure you don't have your headphones in um, when the competition is starting. If you wanna walk into or after you get screened, if you wanna listen to music because you're there early and get fired up for the day, uh, feel free to do so. But please do not um, enter to go to your court with headphones in or you'll be asked to take them out. So, um, and then please tuck your credentials uh, into your college shirt or give them to your coach when the competition is starting. So for rules, as an athlete, you are able to request a measurement. Sometimes, um, I've only played bocce a few times, but when I'm down on one side, it looks one way um, and the official goes, no, it's red throw. I'm like, I don't know about that. If you're questioning that, you have the right to ask for a measurement. Um, so feel free to speak up if you think they may be viewing things a little differently. So um, feel free to do that. So we will have officials, some of which are volunteers, some of which we have had um, come year after year, um, and they will be the officials trained to properly measure um, for you when you compete. So for awards, they will be held in the pavilion, as we showed you earlier. Um, in the past, you've had law enforcement place those awards around your neck. It will be a little bit different this year. Um, so the awards tray will be held out, um, hands extended, and you as the athlete may then take the award off that tray um, just to keep the six feet um, distance there. And then feel free to place that award around your neck. Um, if I were you, I would and wear it proud. Um, I know if the law enforcement uh, officers there could put it around your neck, they would also do so. That's what they love to do at awards. Um, to see you smile, um, show how happy you are after all of your hard work that day. So just know there's no reason you can't put that around your neck once you get it. So I'd put it on and wear it proud. Um, law enforcement will be there just to take pictures, um, socially distanced, of course, but they will be there. So feel free to ask them if uh, you would like a picture taken with them, um, either your parents or spectator or somebody, or um, maybe even our photographer, if they're around, we'll take your picture um, for that day. But when waiting for pictures, athletes need to stay away from each other. I know that I've had other people remind me at practices when I've gone out there, please make sure you're six feet away. Um, so if somebody does that to you, please don't take it personally. Um, it's happened to all of us and we're just trying to keep everybody safe um, and follow the guidelines that are in place so we can have a great competition. The awards location, as we were talking about, this is exactly it. Um, some of those um, chairs or um, picnic tables will be moved out 
of course, but that will be the awards um, location. Staging will take place behind that. So we're kind of looking at the front of it right now at an angle, um, but you'll be coming from that back left side um, and then proceed over to staging. It'll be made clear upon arrival there and that will be behind uh, what you're looking at right now. I will say that it's shaded for the course of the day that I've been there in the past. And again, with the weather, it should not be too hot while you're waiting around and that should not be too long anyway. So awards would take in place there. Families and spectators, when you arrive, you will have an area there where it's made clear where to stand um, and um, it'll be set up where you can take pictures of your athletes. So a reminder about food, we talked about just please eat ahead of time before your sessions. Um, if there is a medical need related to food, that just meet, has to be eaten outside of the fence at all times. Um, there will be Towson personnel most likely there um, to monitor that also, just so they know that um, we've passed on these rules um, and that everybody's complying. So some special events coming up which I think uh, Elizabeth, you mentioned um, earlier before um, we started today, there will be a Justin and Jim show Thursday night, uh, which is June 10th at 7 p.m. Um, so all you have to do to check that out will be to hit that link. They'll come up with four different options of dates. Um, two of them have already happened, but two of them are still upcoming. So I believe that is this week and then also next week or so. Um, so check that out. I have not joined that one, so if you go, let me know what it's like. Uh, on June 12th, there's a Summer Games Victory Dance Party. So that'll begin, uh, again, virtually, Saturday, June 12th. That will also start at 7, uh, run a little longer than the Justin and Jim show, um, looking at an hour and a half there, but that will be the Summer Games Victory Dance Party. So that's an athlete-planned, athlete-managed, and athlete-DJed weekly event. Uh, which I know has been a highlight for a lot of people, and I've heard very good things about that. So if you want to get registered for that, you do need to do so in advance, um, but the links will be down below for you to do so. So some updates here, the event guide. If you're wondering exactly all the details of the day, that's what will be in that event guide. Um, that will not just be for bocce, that includes everything related to summer games. If you are specifically looking for the bocce version of that, it is posted on the bocce coaches resource page. So instead of looking through maybe an 80 page document, uh, you get 15 pages or so on that to just kind of check whatever detail you're looking for. Um, but I'd encourage you to check it out and see everything um, that's in that guide. So medical, we talked about it being a nice day. We will be on turf, which tends to be a little bit warmer. So please just stay hydrated, bring some sunscreen, um, maybe bug repellent, even though you can't have cicada repellent, um, please um, consider bringing that. Um, and then again, just drink water throughout the day. There will not be water coolers like we have had at past summer games, just to keep everybody spread out, but we will have plenty of water bottles. Um, with that being said, please bring your own water just so you have quick access to it. Um, but we will have bottled water available for you. So just some final reminders here, masks for everyone except uh, athletes and partners when they're competing. At that point, they are optional. No direct contact. Again, that doesn't mean we can't encourage each other. Uh, six feet apart at all times. And then people are attending based on these protocols. So we received feedback from coaches and area directors a couple months ago as we were planning summer games. And this is what we came to um, the conclusion wise, along with Towson, uh, with these protocols in place. We just want to abide by that um, because that's what people agreed on. So um, help us follow those guidelines. Um, I think that might be near the end of it. No, there's another slide or so. So the volunteer opportunities, there still are some. I was talking to Sam Boyd, our volunteer. Um, coordinator tonight and Bocce still has some openings. So if you would like to volunteer, um, please feel free to check out that page. If you have not volunteered with Special Olympics before, um, I would highly encourage you to check out Summer Games. That'll probably be, um, I would call it the biggest and baddest event uh, that we have sports wise. So I would encourage you to come interact with the athletes. Um, I know that it would really 
help them to see your support and it'll also feed back into you also. Um, our athletes <laughs> pour into us as much as we pour into them. So feel free to check out those opportunities. If you're not familiar with the sport, it'll also on that page provide you details about um, what an official does, what a measurer does. That's a little self-explanatory, I understand. But there are um, a few different roles that you can sign up for for um, Saturday. So I just, again, want to express how excited we are. Um, I know as you as athletes are very excited also. Typically, we have these webinars kind of as a big group that I think Jeff Abel uh, leads. But with all the little details that we want to make sure um, we're covered this year, um, we thought we might want to break it up just so we could be here to answer your questions, um, which is why we're here. So at this point, if you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself. Um, don't worry about some people might not want to because you're going to talk over somebody else. Don't worry about that. Um, if that happens, we'll just call one person and go down the line here. But again, thank you for everyone being on tonight. So questions, what do we have? Yeah, uh, so uh, a couple things, Ryan, this is Mike. Um, could you uh, back up to the map uh, and show uh, for folks who hadn't been there before uh, where the um, uh, the restrooms uh, are that they would be utilizing? Uh, yeah, so I know where they are for athletics. I don't remember for bocce off the top of my head. I'd have to look at that. Okay, um, so uh, I can't show it on the map, but uh, it, when you're looking here, the building to the right is the University Union, uh, and they are, uh, they're still doing some construction on one end of it, but it is open for us, uh, and we can utilize the restrooms inside the University Union. So... Um, uh, I'm not sure if you all had uh, additional portable toilets there, but the University Union I know covers uh, and has you know ample um, uh, facilities that are there. Uh, we um, and actually, folks are not set now that they can unmute themselves. Uh, but if you raise your hand, uh, and to do that, uh, actually, I'm not sure I can show you how to do that. Um, and while we're doing that, the other question that Matt uh, Awalt is asking is um, if they've never been to Towson campus, so. Uh, while we um, look for any other questions, I'll pull up a map for that and I can share that in just a moment. Uh, Ryan, if you can stop sharing for a moment. Yes, of course. Uh, that would be great. And then uh, let me share my screen. And let's just get that nice and big. Oops, wrong one. This one. Okay, so. Um, uh, Towson Town, um, if you've never been to Towson campus before, whoops. Okay, and the event guide has directions and addresses and such. Uh, if you can see, um, let me see if we can go that road. Oh, let me, see, let me swap it. Okay. Uh, Ryan, can you see the map full screen now? Perfectly, yeah. Perfectly, okay. So uh, the Baltimore Beltway is way up here, if you will. <laughs> Okay, uh, and you uh, probably the best way to come in is take in Charles Charles Street, and then Towson Town Boulevard is here, um, and the campus is all south for the most part south of Towson Town Boulevard. On the campus, Bocce will be right here. Uh, this is Burdick Field. This is the parking garage. If you can see my cursor here, uh, this is the University Union. So Bocce will be right here. While you're doing Bocce, way over here. Uh, on the soccer in the soccer stadium, cheerleading will be going on. So uh, if you uh, finish up early uh, and want to head over and watch some cheerleading, um, I'm not sure how late that's going. Uh, and then if you want to come back on Sunday, Sunday, uh, we'll have track our athletics track and field com competition going on here. Um, but yeah, it's right here in the middle. Um, again, called Burdick Field. Uh, and if you are you're sure to go to the um, and look at the event guide. Uh, that, that will certainly help you. Uh, and also, I should say, uh, and I apologize if Ryan already said this, 
we will by tomorrow uh, morning, let's say before noon tomorrow, uh, we will be sending out to everyone uh, for whom we have an email address uh, and is registered for summer games. Uh, we will be sending out um, links, uh, basically a follow up to the email I sent out on Friday to, to all of you um, so that you can go right to the sites and so on down the line. Um, so don't worry about having to scribble all this down. I think I saw someone uh, taking pictures of some of the links and such. You won't have to worry about that by tomorrow. Uh, you'll um, uh, you'll be getting that. So let me go back to stop sharing. Okay. Um, so anyone else? Uh, looks like Aaron. Uh, let me. Okay, Aaron. You should be able to unmute now, Aaron Connolly. I hope. Um. There. When will the schedule will be out for Bocce? So, Aaron, that was uh, a slide. I'll just pop this slide back up just so I can show you. Ryan. Oh, you're talking specifically this The game. Yeah. Yeah. So of the games. That will be on the coaches' resource page by the end of tomorrow. Um, also, your coaches upon arrival will have a delegation packet with all that information in it. But if you check that page, um, give me till <laughs> 10 o'clock tomorrow night, um, GV State. Uh, check that page, okay. and you'll have your schedule up there, and I'll show you exactly when you're going out. Okay. okay. Thanks. Great question. Great. Yep. Elizabeth, yes. Uh, I asked you to unmute. Um, hi. No. I just wanted to say hi to Wenny. Okay. Hi, Wenny. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, let's see. Um, is there anybody else here who is uh, who actually is going to? Unfortunately, Elizabeth, I know you won't be able to be with us. So, if anybody, any of uh, anybody who's going to be with us at uh, Towson has any other questions. Oops. Oh, okay. I see Mary Jo. You should be able to unmute now, Mary Jo. I would like to play bocce. Uh, Saturday, I'm an alternate, but um, uh, I guess I'll find out by Friday if I'm playing or not. Yep. Uh, you to, uh, talk your your coach. I'm sure is going to inform you. We'll keep you posted. Yep. And I see uh, if Rennie is your coach. I see him nodding away. Rennie and I go way, way too many years to count, <laughs> and <laughs> I know he will take care of you. So. Okay. <laughs> so. Cool. And Rennie, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that. You should be able to unmute, sir. And I should nope. point out that Rennie is also a, one of the key members of our uh, Bocce sports management team uh, that uh, works to, to on the sport throughout the entire year. So. Yeah, well, I'll wait much. till Friday. I'll be patient. All right. <laughs> Mary Jo, thank you very much for being patient. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, looks like Laura's got a question. Let's unmute Laura. Okay. So go again. Hi. Hi. Oh, yes. I just I, I, I just have a question. Um, me and my um, commitment fiance, Jake, are uh, oh, sorry. I was actually getting a call from him. Me and my commitment fiance, Jake, are a couple. Are we allowed to get a picture together? We're actually partners. Mm -hmm. You want to take that one, Ryan? Um, if your partners, no, feel free to take that picture. Um, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong. You would still need to be six feet apart. Um, yeah, we'd yeah. ask that. I know that if you're like, I don't know if you're um, living in the same household or whatever, okay. but just so it doesn't raise questions and other folks, you know, think an exception's being made, we'd ask that you uh, maintain that distancing. Um, but also keep in mind what Ryan said earlier, that um, while you're playing your game out there, you can't be using your cell phone then. So you can take your pictures at, at another time. Okay. Okay. okay thank one. you so much. I'm looking you forward are, to it. Really excited. You're quite welcome. We are looking forward to seeing all of you. Uh, I'm looking and 
I don't see any other in the chat or with a hand raised. That's Dolores hand raised. So I think that may be it, Mr. Kelchner. Alrighty. In case it's not though, and you have any other questions, um, again, please reach out to your coach first. Um, and if there are any, they will bring them to me. But again, no need to write all this stuff down or keep in your head for the rest of your night. Go enjoy your night, um, but get ready for this weekend. Um, you will have access to this slide deck. I mean, yeah, the slide deck and also um, the recording posted on the coach's resource page. So just a few days away from summer games. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled. It'll be my first summer games uh, on staff here. Looking forward to seeing all of you, um, see all the hard work. Um, we had a lot of time during COVID to stay at home, and there were many athletes that I know that worked very hard uh, during that time. So that won't go unrecognized. Um, and looking forward to seeing you all. Thank you, parents, for all your support. Um, and it takes everybody to make this happen. So thank you very much. Um, look forward to seeing you all Saturday, and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.